Hi guys, uh, reporting here from the second day of the conference. Uh, it's actually the first day of presentations. Uh, sadly, uh, Mashinsky was not here. Uh, there's been a number of people that didn't come, um, uh, apparently because uh, they were saddened about Bajatov and uh, he was a, a great leader. Uh, although they've done a very good job and they uh, replace uh, some speakers, uh, however, t tomorrow morning um, I've been informed that there is another change and there's a guy called Uritzkrov, uh, I can't say that name, but it, he's done a lot of uh, uh, experimental research and into strange radiation and so forth and uh, he actually collaborates with uh, Mashinsky so perhaps I can ask some of the questions uh, raised from the paper that I translated over the last month and a half. Um, uh, to him uh, as a stand-in. Anyway, um, so the highlights of the day for me really were the uh, Parkamov presentation. I think a couple of details I can just throw you um, and I'll, I'll try and talk about this in more detail a little bit later, but uh, he was using like a silicon sealant uh, that allowed uh, it was high temperature about 300 degrees and that allowed uh, flexibility so that as the reactor expanded or whatever, uh, whereas all the other sealants before had kind of like uh, cracked or come away, um, this was a able to be flexible enough. And, and so that that uh, uh, enabled, uh, uh, was part of the factor for, for the long run. Um, and there are some things on the charts where you'll see uh, a pressure change and what happened when the excess heat at the end of the experiment was running low, he injected some fresh hydrogen and this uh, um, gave a boost back up and then he did it again it didn't really give so much of a boost and and then when it went back to zero uh, excess heat he kind of called that a day um uh, he did vacuum out uh, and heat uh, at, at one point before uh, uh loading the actual hydrogen i think it is i've done a bad translation hopefully someone can uh, take my uh, um scraped uh, uh uh, Russian and uh, or uh, in combination with the bad translation and do a better translation. Anyway, uh, the second highlight uh, was uh, uh, which I didn't really get much out of, and I hope to get uh, some more uh, some which way, um, which was uh, transmutation in the Earth's core, uh, and that that was an interesting presentation. Although, like I say, I didn't really get much of it. Um, but um, I, I have to say Sergei Godin's presentation was really interesting and I've got that encoding at the moment and maybe I can get that out to you in the morning I don't know I'm gonna try um, uh, it's quite 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 meaty and there's a lot of stuff in there and then later maybe in the evening I'll also try and get out uh, a, a dirty uh, uh, translation from a scraped uh, Russian anyway uh, we had a little break in the afternoon and uh, some of the uh, delegates, uh, unbeknownst to me, <laughs> took a trip out uh, to the Synthestech lab and uh, some of the researchers here uh, are being given access to uh, isotopic analysis using the equipment they bought with their cryptocurrency um, issue. Um, so this is benefiting more than just their group. And that's, this is really good to see collaboration. In fact, I have to say, um, you know, uh, that they really are a family here. Um, when um, the, the day started with a, a sort of a, a, a Alexander Parkamov giving a, a sort of life and times of uh, Yurishi Bajatov and uh, we all had a, a moment silence so stood up and, and respected him and it was it was quite emotional and there were teary eyes I even uh, welled up at one point uh, but uh, uh, they're, they're all thinking you know they're all trying to to work together and it's it's just really then they're, they're not fighting each other they're working together and, and it's it's a really um, different dynamic here I have to say uh, the other thing that um, the chairman today uh, for for the day session, uh, uh, Anatoly Klimov, um, proposed, and I think we're going to run it through the rest of the day, uh, the rest of the week rather, is to have um, a daily round table in the evening, which we did. And uh, uh, this, for me, was the highlight of the day. Uh, 
what is very, very clear is that the, the Russian sphere here have um, basically accepted that uh, strange radiation is a real thing. Um, I, it's almost like th there isn't a researcher here that hasn't seen it and hasn't seen it in bucket loads. Uh, and um, there, there was uh, Shishkin, who I'm really looking forward to his work at the end of the, the week. I think it was this guy. Uh, I need to confirm. But uh, apparently he works at Dubna, which is the nuclear research uh, institute outside of uh, uh, Moscow. And uh, one piece of research he's done is with glow discharge to uh, look at the uh, effect of strange radiation on mice and uh, essentially uh, it does uh, cause cancer. You can't detect the radiation with normal detectors it would seem, um, but it does have a biological effect. Now he said something which was very interesting to me because this is along my lines of thinking. Um, basically Parkamov said you know neutrinos are very important for uh, vary varying um, radioactive decay and uh, uh, there's speculation at this uh, nuclear authority or nuclear body um, that uh, um, part of the active agent or strange radiation uh, could be a cluster of uh, uh, neutrinos, like a very large cluster of neutrinos. Um, I think that probably is because they're trying to consider why is it neutral or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, there was a whole discussion uh on strange radiation and, and essentially there was a private group there uh, two guys they speak good English I hope to catch up with them more uh, over the course of uh, uh, the week they're very congenial it's good to hang out with them uh, and they help me out with some of the Russian translation uh, anyway they've been doing this in a, in a private capacity uh, but they stopped uh, 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 I think I don't know whether it's all research or, or research into uh, these high power reactors um, about 18 months ago uh, and it, uh, really um, I think I think they were they were getting a bit scared uh, with with uh, Yuji Bezhatov uh, passing away um, essentially they said some very very interesting things which is in line with many of the other things uh, that uh, I've either observed or, or other people have observed or uh, been informed about or learned about over the the, the last year and a half uh, and uh, they were saying uh, basically I was I was talking about what I understand that you know um, uh, this whatever it is in metals can infect other metals um, a lot of them would so it's essentially we're saying look this private group was saying you know that they were proposing in fact everyone was trying to come up with a proposal for the way forward and uh, this private group said listen um, we basically can't go forward until we understand more about strange radiation and uh, how to uh, um, protect uh, uh, researchers uh, against strange radiation. And um, uh, so, and, and, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, the, the echo sample did scare me a little, um, uh, <laughs> an analyzing it. And um, anyway, so, uh, one one aspect came up is that the Shishkin said the, that uh, um, one proposal for protection is many many layers of thin material, not a thick layer of metal, but layers of material gap, material gap, or a conductor, a dielectric conductor, or something like that. And this is very similar to what Shoulders was saying that basically you need to uh, rather uh, let's put it like this. And the active agent, in his case, he calls it EVOs. They simply do not like to pass through uh, um, uh, impedance changes. So if you have many, many thin layers, uh, then you know they, they're going to have to struggle to get through it. Uh, maybe if you uh, tie those layers to ground, at least the conductors, then um, you know you could have a, an effective shield. So this isn't about the thickness of a material; it's about the um, number of changes of the material and uh, this uh, reminds me of the kind of um, uh, uh, strange radiation or, or, or detector that uh, 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 Vysotsky and uh, um, Adamenko used uh, where they were they had like a thin film of oil then they had some uh, I think it was a uh, uh, Aluminium and then uh, a, a, a dielectric and then an insulator or so, uh, so on. I, I talked about it at ICCF 
uh, 21. But anyway, um, they, they have various levels of impedance and uh, it goes into the conductor and doesn't go through the dielectric or the insulator. And, and so it kind of like uh, runs along it. So you might end up with these thin sheets completely covered in tracks. Um, but that means that they're not going into your body and doing uh, things that are, are not good, uh, potentially. Uh, so that was really interesting to hear. Uh, I, I also then brought up the fact that, um, uh, you know, this material can, uh, it's, I was like, are people worried about running experiments uh, and uh, getting uh, strange radiation into them? Um, and so uh, I, I, I was saying, well, uh, you know, it's not just experiments, it's that the ash might be active. And uh, actually, there's going to be a presentation of a, a young guy. Uh, he, he's a sound guy. And he's done a, a statistical analysis and a lot of uh, research on uh, strange radiation tracks coming from Alexander Parkamov uh, and his group's uh, uh, research over the last year and a half. So the, the, really, I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. And if I can share that with you, um, uh, I think it's really going to inform uh, the community uh, about, um, you know, the nature of this beast. Uh, and so um, I was talking about uh, uh, the fact that uh, um, it seems to dwell and, 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 and uh, shoulders were saying, look, basically, once this is in a metal, it'll stay in there indefinitely until you intentionally blow it up in his words. But uh, you can reactivate it, it would seem, effectively. So it's in there, it's dormant, and you're blowing it up. So that's you're actually reactivating it. So there's two aspects to that. One is that it can stay in a material for a very long period of time, indefinitely, according to shoulders. Um, uh, obviously, we've talked about the way that it can infect. So if you get a conductor and like al aluminium's got it in and contact another piece of aluminium, it can infect it. So this is a way of propagating and, 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 and breeding fuel. However... Um, uh, the uh, property um, of it staying in there um, was exemplified by the fact that uh, the echo fuel was active many months after um, it was produced. And so I, I brought this up and, and one of the guys from this private group was said, uh, well, <laughs> uh, you know, th they've had it active for two years. Uh, and then I said, well, uh, there's another aspect to this. Um, it, it's, Shoulder said you could activate it and when it's in a dormant state and and uh, uh this is something that lion did he took a, a piece of uh, uh copper that had changed out from the outside coils that had changed into cu2o into a he took a fragment of that that was produced in june 2017 i think it was in february uh, uh this year and he heated up i think to 800 degrees for eight hours or something for a period of time to 800 degrees uh, and then he put this, uh, what would not look like it was an active uh, piece, uh, and uh, onto some uh, uh, film and, and saw uh, tracks again. So that showed it could be reactivated. And then this private guy said, well, actually, <laughs> I have to say that uh, we took these two-year-old pieces of material out of our reactors and we exposed them to light and they were reactivated. So here you have one exposed to heat and then one exposed to light uh, and both of them get reactivated. So um, this is good from a point of view of having um, a reactor that can be shut down and restarted or, or lie dormant or, or be um, conditioned and, and, and then restarted. But it does mean that, you know, if you're handling ash that's come out of a low energy nuclear reaction uh, reactor, uh, and you could inadvertently expose it to some form of stimulation and it's off to the races uh, producing uh, strange radiation again. So it isn't just um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the run time, it is the downtime and, and the dormant time uh, that we need to be considering. So this does give us an opportunity. It does mean that we can take, for instance, uh, 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 what is essentially dormant um, uh, uh, fuel from ECHO uh, and divide that up and send samples to people and they might be able to reactivate it with light or heat and, and then learn to study uh, protection against it or, or um, uh, other aspects of strange radiation. But uh, for me, I, I, I don't know whether people have got this, but um, I, I really think this is one of the most important areas uh, to take this. We, if we're going to take this uh, seriously, we, we need to treat it with respect, uh, understand what we're dealing with, 
because it doesn't appear on uh, normal detectors. <laughs> uh, I mean, yes, if the um, these clusters or whatever they break up, they can throw out you know a beta burst, or they can throw throw out maybe what's inside them, like a whole bunch of alphas or something like like was observed by uh, Adamenko. It makes a macro cluster, and uh, and then it gets unstable and, goes, and just spits out a load of alpha, uh, high energy alpha. So um, you know th these are really really interesting things, and it's just it's so refreshing. It's so refreshing. Oh, there goes the light. <laughs> Ooh. Um, it's so refreshing uh, to be amongst a group of people who are just, they're just willing to talk about, you know, what they've seen and not not, not try and talk around it or, or pretend it doesn't exist or, you know, these very, very specific tracks which are absolutely not similar to normal particle or radiation tracks. They, they exist. You can see them. <laughs> Stop imagining they're not there when they are physically there. And uh, they can do things like rip reactors apart. So um, I think for me uh, that uh, was a, a real eye opener. They are in a completely different headspace here. Completely different headspace. Now, whilst there's some disagreement as to whether you actually need uh, uh, the um, material to be as active uh, uh, as it as it would need to be to produce strange radiation uh, uh, for actual Lena excess heat. Um, you know, it might be the case that you you can keep it below a certain level and, and you don't uh, produce strange radiation. And, and this is what I've tried to uh, intimate um, over the course of the last 18 months is that you, you don't push this too hard. You know, it's like, uh, just just use it, uh, but don't abuse it. Um, uh, and, and then it, it comes down to the whole thing about containment. And uh, you'll see from uh, um, uh, Sergey Gordon's uh, research uh, where the uh, strange radiation has done some real damage to his, his reactors. And uh, it's just another one to the list. So, I mean, at some point you've got to say it, it's, it's what it is and, and uh, uh, move on with that understanding. Anyway, so I, I did actually record this roundtable session. It is almost entirely in Russian. There's a few bits where I, I step in. It's on SoundCloud. Um, so uh, go and dig into that. Uh, see if you can find out if there's some Russian speakers. Uh, maybe you can dig out some more information there. Uh, but I think Shishkin's work and the analysis of um, uh, many uh, evidences of strange radiation and their effects on various reactor materials is going to be something that's going to be quite special. Um, and, uh, you know, it's... Uh, 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 when, you, when, you, when you think you're an island some, sometimes and, and, and you, 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 you're trying to talk to people and they, they don't want to know, and, and, and then you realise there's just a whole bunch of people that have seen it too. It's, uh, um, it's, uh, uh, it's a bit of a weight off your shoulders. Uh, uh, anyway, so... Um, I'll try and keep you informed. Uh, I'm going to load this now and uh, I'm going to try and get some sleep because I was up too late last night uh, with the uh, Mashinsky translation. Anyway, thank you for um, uh, 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 your support and uh, any questions, you know where to put them.